I always give away too much. Mm. It's like I've got no sense of touch. Hey, Lifer Tribe. Welcome to another video, Living Life with Stay. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us today. And since you're here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and becoming a permanent part of the Lifer Tribe. So y'all, today we are going to talk about a subject matter that I had no idea was so engaging or popular until I made a TikTok about it the other day. And that subject is proper etiquette and soft skills for when you are a visitor at someone else's house. And so this is like if you've been invited over for a cookout, maybe for a cocktail party or dinner, or just to come over to watch the Super Bowl. When you are invited as a guest to someone's house, there are certain soft skills etiquette that you need to kind of follow as an invited guest. So the first one we're going to talk about is don't show up at people's house empty handed. And always, you know, if you can ask the guest if there's, or I'm sorry, the host, if there's anything that you can bring. And a lot of times people will say nothing, don't bring anything, or they may ask you to pick up a certain item that maybe they forgot. Hey, do you mind picking up a couple of bags of ice? Can you bring some plates? What have you? And if they have given you something in particular to bring, then that's fine. Just bring that thing but also don't let them pay you for whatever you've brought if they've asked you to bring something. Just consider that as your contribution. But many times hosts are going to say, no, don't bring anything at all. Just bring yourself, bring your uh, appetite, bring your positive vibes. Just come on. And I'm not saying that hosts don't mean that sincerely. However, They've gone through a lot of trouble to prepare a meal, to get their house together, and it's just nice to show up with just kind of that thank you gift. I appreciate you inviting me over. And so that could be something like a bottle of wine, a bouquet of flowers, a nice candle, maybe even a dessert. You don't necessarily need to, or maybe you shouldn't even bring a side dish or anything like that because they may be having the meal catered or they may have a certain menu and maybe there are people with certain allergies. But just bringing a small token of your appreciation is just the right thing to do in my opinion. And along with that, be prepared to leave whatever you brought, no matter whether they used it or not, opened it or not, no matter how much is left over, leave it there. It's for the host. It's for the other guest. Just leave it there. Another thing that sometimes people don't realize is maybe a little uncouth is don't ask to take home a to-go plate unless you've been offered. You don't know what their plans are for that leftover food. I know someone in particular who whenever she has big dinners and soirees at her home, if there's food left over and it hasn't been picked over, it's still fresh, she takes it and donates it to a homeless shelter and they really appreciate it. Some people may be saving the leftovers for their kids who are still home. Just don't ask to take leftovers and definitely don't ask to take leftovers and then ask them for their Tupperware or container to take it home in, but don't show up with your own Tupperware and container either. However, if the host offers you, insists that you take something, don't take enough to feed your whole family the next day. Just be courteous in how much you take. Just take your portion, thank them for that, and let that be enough. Those are just the two that kind of stick out to me first and foremost. You also don't want to show up to someone else's home with uninvited guests. Now I know there are those occasions where maybe you already made plans with somebody else but you'd also like to attend this event or maybe you had someone come visit you from out of town and you don't think it would be a big deal for them to tag along and it may not be. But ask the host first. You're not sure if they're planning for a certain amount of people. 
again they may be, may be having the event catered and just because this person is a family member or a friend of yours they're still a stranger to the host and they have the right to be particular about who they allow in their home so you just want to make sure that if it's something you feel you need to do or you'd like to do just make sure that you get the host okay before you just show up with someone that they don't know or even someone that maybe they know but just wasn't invited you also don't want to show up to people's houses super duper early or super late people are planning for you to be there and so you want to be courteous of the start time because if they're serving food and if they're anything like me they're going to want their food to be hot when people eat it your food is best when it's fresh and they're not going to want the food to sit but they're also not going to want to wait for stragglers before they can serve their meal so be courteous people set a start time because that's when they expect guests to arrive and that's when they want to get started so if you're 10 to 15 minutes late that's okay in my opinion but don't come an hour two hours late I just don't feel that that's considerate of their preparation and their time. And you also don't want to stay super late. Most events, even if they don't have an end time, you don't want to stay more than four hours. Or if it's something in particular like the Super Bowl or you're invited over to some kind of watch party, you don't want to straggle on longer than maybe 30, 45 minutes after the end of that event just to kind of chit chat, talk about what you just saw. But going to someone's house at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then staying until 10, 11 o'clock at night, I just don't think it's considerate of the host. It's not a 24 hour thing. You're not spending the night. So you just want to be courteous. They may not be prepared for having people there until the wee hours of the morning. Plus the fact that they have probably been up since early that day in preparation, doing all the things, getting the house together, making the meal, and you want them to be able to get their rest. Now, if this is a really great friend of yours or a family member, all of these rules may not necessarily apply because you have a certain relationship, you have a certain understanding. But if this is just more of a casual acquaintance, a business friend, something like that, and you guys don't really have that sort of relationship, I just think that it's important to be mindful of these things and not just assume that it's okay because other people are staying. Because I had one person that uh, kind of got embarrassed one time because she was invited to a new friend's house for a girls night get together and it was a very small group of people and the person who invited her and it was their home was a co-worker and they were just starting to kind of start their friendship and so when the person I know went over there were only like three other women there and they were just talking and talking and talking and she ended up staying for hours on end but didn't realize that she was the only one who wasn't actually staying there overnight that the other people had come a distance and she left feeling like oh my gosh they may have just been staying up thinking that I didn't want to leave. I didn't realize that everyone else was actually sleeping here. And so you never know the situation. And so you just want to be aware of the time and you don't want to, like my grandmother would say, overstay your welcome. Now, I want to add a couple of little bonuses for the flip side of it when you're actually the host of an event. When you're a host of an event, you want to be aware and cognizant of and considerate of your guest time and their effort that they put into coming to your event. So if you say that the event starts at four o'clock, don't let people show up at your house at four o'clock and everything is still in disarray and you're needing help with this or you're needing help with that or you're just now starting to cook things because you will either find yourself with a bunch of food and preparation and most people have left or it's just embarrassing in my opinion. So when you are hosting something, you want to be very aware of people's times and be as prepared as possible. In the same token that you want people to be on time because of the preparation you've given, you also want to be prepared for guests. 
you also don't want to be asking your guests to help you with setting everything up. And again, depending on the relationship, but you don't want people walking in the door and it's like, oh good, I'm glad you're here. Can you go out there and get the grill lit? Can you go out to my garage and, and help pull in some chairs? It's just not a good look. Again, in my humble opinion. And there's one other thing that I forgot to mention on the other side and it may have just slipped my mind again. Oh, when you go to people's homes, don't ask them for a tour of their house. That's not nice. Everybody's not prepared for the tour in the house. Where you are at, that is the visiting area. If it is not like a housewarming party with a tour, don't ask to see their homes. That is just nosy. People don't always have their house set up for a tour. And there are a lot of parts of the home that are private. Also, don't go to people's homes opening up closets, opening up drawers, going into rooms that you have not been invited to. If it is a two-story home, unless you were told, oh yeah, they're playing uh, spades up in the loft, go ahead up there. Don't go up those stairs and also ask what bathroom you're supposed to use. There's just certain courtesies and things that come along with visiting into someone's private space. Just because someone has invited you to their home, that does not all of a sudden make their home public. If the party, if the event is being held outdoors, don't take it upon yourself to sit in the house unless there is clearly an area that they've designated for guests. If you're someone who doesn't like to be outside and you get there and it's too hot, too many bugs, whatever, then excuse yourself and leave early. But that does not give you the right to just set up in someone's home. And so those are a few that I remembered after the fact in the beginning but hopefully y'all are picking up what I'm putting down and just go ahead and add those to the front of the video. So hopefully I've given you some soft skills, tips, and little etiquette bonuses that you'll remember whenever you're invited to someone's home or when you are the host. And if it's not you, and I'm sure it's not you because the Lifer Tribe, we're all about proper etiquette and we all have manners. But there are some people who mean no harm. They just don't know. So feel free to share this video with them. Well, y'all know the drill. Thank you once again for joining me. I appreciate and love each and every one of you to bits and pieces. And as always, be kind to one another and love one another. But don't forget to live your life. L-Y-F-E. Love yourself first explicitly. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. I always give away too much. Mm. It's like I've got no sense of touch